give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away I give myself away So you can Come on, let him know I give myself Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. What would happen if a generation embraced this? Come on, tell me. Here I am. Here I am. Welcome to the Dead Encouragement, where up today's show they encourage you to inspire you. Just give your life over to Jesus Christ, or if you're a Christian already, to just bear more fruit. But that's what the kingdom of God is all about, is bearing fruit. Today we are starting with a word of prayer. Lord God, we just thank you, praise you for this day. Thank you for your love and your kindness. Lord God, continue to be with us throughout um, today and, and forevermore, Lord God, as we give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' precious name, pray. Amen, amen. Amen. So today we are um, going to be talking about let go and let God. Um, giving yourself to Him. Um, just killing the flesh and um, just letting Him take over. Because a lot of times we think that we can do things ourselves. A lot of times we think that nobody else can fix it but us. Um, but that's not true. And sometimes God will let you go to your wit's end till you find no more strength left. And then He comes and He handles it. And when He does, it's miraculous. It's amazing. And nobody gets the credit but God. I will be starting with the poem, Let Go and Let God. As children bring their broken toys with tears for us to mend, I brought my broken heart to God because he is my friend. But then, instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I hung around and tried to help with ways that were my own. At last I snatched it back and cried, how can you be so slow? My child, he said, what can I do? You never did let go. So that's strong in itself, let go. You know, if we don't let go, God can't help. If we don't let go, He can't show up. He can't do all the wonderful things that we know that He can do. Amen, amen. And I just like to emphasize this through the prophet Hosea, when he was warning the children of Israel to turn back from their wicked ways and to go forward with God. You know, they went, they didn't want to let go of their idols. You know, they start praising these 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 idols, even sacrificing their babies to these idols, something that God will never allow, you know, but until they had let go of their idols, because um, God predicted judgment through the northern uh, prophet, he predicted judgment for Israel, and it was actually wiped off the map um, by the Assyrians, you know, and these are the same people we're fighting today, you know, our soldiers on a, on, a, on a continent or the country of Iraq, and that's the same Assyrians who was trying to come into this country to, to wipe us off the map. But I like to say we have to have a fast too. You know, the nation should call for a day of fast like our President Abraham Lincoln did. Um, he called for a day of fast. And even Thomas Jefferson once said that, he said, I recall that the justice of God is just, but his justice will not sleep forever. Mm. You know, it's just mm. like God has to punish sin. You know, he continues to let us do what we want to mm. do. You know, like I said, we don't want to let go of these, these, these idols, these, these things in our life that's taking God presence. Mm -hmm. You know, God's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you don't want to fall in the hands of a jealous God. 
And, you know, when we don't let go, uh, we think that we did it ourselves. You know, God gets no glory. We get all the glory. So a lot of times he afflicts us with things that um, he can only get rid of. Um, there's two people in the Bible that I would um, like for us to look at. One is Apostle Paul. He was afflicted with a thorn in his flesh. And even though, even though he prayed to God, about three times, God would not remove it. Now, we don't know what it was, but we know that it did hinder him. And the reason why it was upon him so that he wouldn't get above himself. Because God blessed him with a lot of things, healing, um, speaking. Um, he was just a prophecy. He was just a man of God following Jesus. The whole mothers and the drunkards, all this kind of stuff, you know. But you know God's harshest words is for his people who know better. That's right. Amen. Who know better, you see. So, so what happened was he had brought announced judgment on Israel. His people, you know why? Because the prophets, because of the ministers, because the leaders had grown corrupt. Amen. He warned them and warned them and warned them, and they hadn't heeded the warning. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he that is often reproved and hardens his neck shall be suddenly destroyed and that without remedy. Amen. You know the easiest neck to break is a stiff neck. Amen. A stiff neck is easy to break. You know, if you want to, I used to drive a mule, and uh, the old mule was hard here. You know, Dad said, he's stiff neck. I didn't quite understand that then. A stiff neck mule would do what he wanted to do. Amen. He'd destroy you and everything around him. When a mule just broke right, he'd touch that line, he just pulled. You know, his mouth is tender. he just go which way he wanted to go. Amen. And God wants us that way. When you get high minded and, and, and stiff neck, you're setting up for destruction. Amen. But so Israel, God had warned the prophet. He had brought plagues on them. Pla you know, plague of grasshoppers. Then the plague of fire on them. Mm -hmm. See, and they haven't heeded God's warning. Some of the things God is doing in this nation, in your town, in your families, is the word of God, is the coming forth of God's judgment because God is displeased. And we can't see it sometimes. We don't put two and two together. You see, and God wants us to have ears to hear and eyes to see mm -hmm. and open up the mind of our understanding to see what he's doing to us. See, mm -hmm. So anyway, what, uh, they didn't he and the prophet each time Amos went, he pled to God for his people. Lord, please uh, short this thing because Israel, every day they're weak people. You know, help them, Lord, have mercy on them. And God withheld his hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold your word, hold my hand back now. He did it twice for them. But the third time, Amos came to him because God's not judging on him. And God told him, no, no, this time I'm going to lower the boom on him. That ain't what that is. don't sound like that. That's exactly what God said. There come a time, see, the Bible says that God will not always chide with men, with men. It is seek me while I can be found, you see. Thank you, Jesus. You find, you don't have forever to receive the Lord, folks. You don't have to ever to repent, folks. Heard a man say one day, you know, I... Folks, I like coming to the Lord and, and repenting. Some of you do because you just nothing else to do. You know, too wet to plow, can't dance, guess I get saved today. No, no, no. Unless God draw you, you can't come to Him. That's right. Yeah. The day you hear His voice, the Bible says, harden not your heart. You. So when you hear God's word, you understand that Christ died for the sins of the world, buried and rose again the third day. That's your calling, folks. How many times have we heard that over and over again? You know, come unto me, all you weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. God keeps calling. He's calling. He's calling. And at a certain point, you can call him, you stop calling. But God's the same way. So in Israel, he said, all right, this is it. You know, uh, you have my hand back twice, this time I'm coming down. And he came with that plumb line. I didn't have a plumb line, but I got so I made up one. I made up that plumb line. Okay, you got to excuse my plumb line, bro. All right? Well, let me tell you what it's all about. Like, like Mr. Horner was saying, it don't matter what my opinion is, or your opinion is, your denominational slant is on God's word. You know what counts? God's word. Amen. Amen. And what God meant when God said his word is what counts. Amen. Not your interpretation on it. You know, for what God meant. Do you know what how you measure if something is if I said, well, okay, I think to take your hand, brother, give me a line that's Give me something that's up. That 36 inches? That a yard? All right, you said give me a yard, brother. Give me a yard. Show me what a yard is. Okay. I can do all y'all you show me a yard. After all the talking in the world, just find your yard. Just find your yard. You don't go measure it. 
A yardstick. <laughs> yeah. Yardstick tell the truth. If you put it up against your hand, the yardstick will tell whether you're right or wrong. Yeah. Amen. If all the arguments said it done, it'll show you whether you're right or wrong. Assuming the yardstick is right. Now men try to change the yardstick, don't they? You can't change God's yardstick. Uh, is it wrong? Is uh, it was settled in heaven? Ain't no arguing in heaven about homosexuality and abortion. Ain't no arguing in heaven about racism. It's never settled in heaven. God know the truth. All right, let's say, uh, like the brother was saying, uh, a plumb line measures vertical, doesn't it? How you tell something level? Is that level? It look level, don't it? That level? It look level? You don't know. But this again, this is a spirit level. Yeah, it's level. It's level. You put that bubble right there between that little line. Okay, how you feel about it is level. Amen. It don't feel right, but it's level. Amen. It doesn't matter about how you feel about it. That's how God's word is, folks. It is constant. It's like God Himself. He never changes. He is immutable. Y'all know what? I can change. <laughs> you know what Paul told folks? And Paul was an apostle. He said, though I or an angel had preached into the gospel that was preached, let it be a curse. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know what? Right now, Brother Holman is teaching the truth. He comes in there and teaches something else. I ain't going to follow that, brother. That's right. Man, talking. He's teaching the word. I ain't going to follow him, but he followed Christ. Amen. That's right. He's doing me the same way. He loved me, but you know what? He'll cut my truth to stay in my friendship. You don't do that. You stay on the word. Now, plumb line, the offer you made the thing, how about something is, uh, Tie your pressure, cut your car. Tire pressure. You got a tire gauge, don't you? Amen. Put 32 PSI in there. I think that's right. I think that's right. No, you measure it and you see. Tell, tell the truth. How about something square or not? You got a square. You measure it see if it's square or not. It ain't square. It won't do right. And the foundation's wrong. The whole thing is wrong. So Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Right on. so many things in God in the world now, as far as living go, is wrong for the foundation up, and you can't make it right. The foundation is wrong. Everything is wrong from that point on. And God will not bless it, folks. Jesus Christ is the only foundation you can lay. Amen. There ain't no other foundation you lay but Jesus Christ. Every other foundation is false. Mm -hmm. Want to about this is not is that denomination. I don't even argue with that mess no more. I Amen. preach Jesus Christ. That's all. You lie to what hit you right, you don't, don't believe it hit you wrong. Amen. That's right. Now, a plumb line, it looks something like this. You hang that thing, it goes vertical. And the Bible in 7-7 says that God was on the wall, he brought the plumb line. The wall at that time was Israel. Amen. Because God laid the foundation, he brought Israel up, but Israel at some point had got off line. And God came to the plumb line, and the plumb line came straight from heaven. Held it straight down. Is that one in line with that? Was wrong. You see. It don't lie. And God held the plug line. You know what happened? If God let me measure, you know, you know what I do? I put a little twist to it. Because <laughs> you know what? I got biases and prejudices. So Y'all understand that? Something I like, something I don't like. As a black man, I might be fair with a white man sometimes. As a white man, sometimes I'm eat up with racism. I ain't fair with a black man sometimes. Amen. God ain't like that. He don't respect the person. Amen. Right. Some folks like rich folks. You know, give him a little break because he got a little money. Or educated people. Amen. Look at them a little different because, but you know what God said? He take the foolish things to confound the wise. Amen. Amen. That's right. Little folks like me, <laughs> Mr. Horner, you know, old tobacco primer, old tree cutter, old yard worker, you know, old farm worker like us, and God turned this world upside down. You know why? Right. And we do what God told us to do. Amen. You know what? And, 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 and uh, the prophet, he prophesied. Well, the old uh, guy went to the king and told him, hey, you look able to cut you down. He told him, you king never will fall. You know, he was the young kid, kick him out of here. Tell him, hey, you go somewhere else and preach that stuff. Amen. That's what I'm you see. Man. And what did God do? God put a curse on him for saying. You know what Amos told him? He said, look, I know where I came from. Amen. Come on, yeah. He said, look, I was a plum picker. You know, I was just a little young boy doing nothing. My family wasn't no preachers. Mm -hmm. I didn't come from no background of big folks. Educated. Hey. We have some um, great things going on on Independence Drive at Western Insurance. Come on down. We can get you covered with health care. Also, um, getting your taxes prepared. Now, if you do both, um, you can get free e-filing. Uh, February the 15th is going to be the deadline to enroll 
with the marketplace. And that'll do it soon because they're taxing people. You think you can get that big refund check? They're taking money out of people refunds because right. they don't have health care. Mm -hmm. So come on down again. It's 1247 Independence Drive, right next to Dozier Karate Studio. And how can they get in touch with? What number can they call you all to um, get in touch with? Two five two four four two four.